a brand new Souls game. I know what you're thinking. What? Did I miss some sort of announcement? No, you didn't, but what you might well have missed is two years of hard work and development time into the largest, most comprehensive, incredibly well-made Dark Souls project, I mean, ever. This is... What happens when you take a group of people who are incredibly both passionate about the Soul series and very talented and capable devs and let them rampant with the idea that we don't just want to create some new weapons, we don't want to just edit in a boss, hell, we don't even want to just create a DLC or expansions worth of content. No, what we want to do is for all intents and purposes from the ground up using Dark Souls 3 as a base create an entire new Souls game that in every facet is an entire new Souls game. The only caveat is technically it's not from, well, from. Seriously, all I can say here is... Because this is seriously impressive. Dark Souls Arch Thrones. Again, you may well have heard of it, but it is just breathtaking. This is a story set around the Nexus of Embers. Welcome to the Nexus, Lost Soul. The Arch Thrones require a great many souls. Produce the coiled sword at the bonfire. The Arch Thrones will allow travel to other worlds. And from this Nexus, you will have access to five, yes, five worlds. So five levels, as it were. That is filled with equipment, bosses, enemies, armor, the very environment like nothing you might recognize. There are a few moments like the Ruins of Blue here. This is from Dark Souls 2, do you remember exactly where? But it's been retooled, rejigged, and I forgive you for not being able to recognize it. The fact that this is even something that is happening, is going to happen, is ludicrous. And if you are liking what you're seeing, well, I'll leave all the relevant links for you to follow it, support it, get involved, or just generally experience it down below. But I couldn't, as a very much true Souls fan, well, not spread the word when it comes to this project, because it's something I think we all want to come to fruition. An entirely new, ground-up experience that oozes the kind of passion and creativity that the actual legitimate games do. Even just little touches, like uh, activating a bonfire by actually stabbing the sword down into it, just give it that little bit of snares, pizzazz, pièce de résistance, you know? And the actual bosses that we get to see are all lovely specimens too. At least in their design. I'm not looking over here at Demon Vanguard and being like, mm. Lovely specimen. I mean, you know, whatever you're into, though, I'm, I'm not gonna judge. He is obviously Asylum Demon-esque in his nature, but very much his own interpretation. Even the UI itself is very clean and well done, and I very much like the look of it. Exactly how much new equipment and such will be there is anybody's guess, but there is genuinely so much. And for the first time, as you've been seeing it throughout this entire video, is uh, this a gameplay showcase of the current state of the overhaul expansion DLC new game mod. This is the biggest chunk and actual showing of what it can do, what it's all about. We've had a few little snippets before, like a very short little look at a certain boss by the name of the Baptismal Guard, who is just, oh, I mean, look at the area as well. Feels very kind of blood -bought. 
Thorny. And he's busting out what looks like some Briar moves there. And the thing is, this mod draws inspiration from all of Souls. You will recognize animations, enemies, areas, but made to look, of course, unique and their own four arch thrones, but underlying the fabric of it will pull from Demon Souls, from Dark Souls 1, from Dark Souls 2, from Dark Souls 3, from Bloodborne, from Elden Ring. You will be able to piece together what's been inspired by what and what has been cleverly used where and what's been disguised and what's been slightly visually shifted, but you can sort of tell where it's coming from. And I think that's one of the main things that makes me both very impressed and excited for this. It feels like a celebration of souls, because it will be this blending pot of every single souls, all the ingredients together, but baked into something new uh, that tastes just like you would hope it would, with just a slightly new tinge that you never thought could be, but you're certainly glad is there. And I, for one, am incredibly happy about it. To the main gameplay showcase, then, we uh, see two big main areas, one involving the disgrace night in a, let's just say, less than pleasant arena of blood and corpses and death, and honestly, this is not the place you really want to spend a lot of time in now, is it? But So, how many of you have picked up where this disgraced knight here is getting a lot of his moveset, general movement patterns, and kind of base design from? I'll give you a clue. Yes, I might be wrong, but to me, I think it's very, very clear. This is Father Owl, but of course, completely reimagined, and that's just absolutely badass. This is a very solid, proper one on one warrior face off boss fight uh, that looks very, very satisfying, especially when he starts getting all of his magical shenanigans on, and it proves a little bit too much for our playtester. Back uh, to uh, the Nexus of Embers to maybe then try a easy easier world, an easier location. So we go up to, well, what is a take on the Golden Order Greatsword in its glow mode embedded into the ground to act as the teleportation device, which again is that little, oh, I recognize that, but it's used as this, and that's really cool, and that's a really good use of it, ah, oh, that I was talking about, as we then find ourselves in the Wartorn Village, a autumn, uh, more aesthetic, and a much, I'd say, nicer vibe than last time, though still, of course, filled with that which wants to have you very, very much dead, as we expect from the brutal world of all things souls, eventually leading to, to me, the far and away most impressive boss of this uh, little demo, which is the Angelic Wall Guardian. And he is not messing around. Very Iron Giant-y, but of course, the angel wings and the blasts of holy light that look like a holy version of of the various moonlight shenanigans, you can see a kind of look from the homing magic in Elden Ring, and there really is just a lot of excellence on display here. But this time around, our hero does manage to win the day, despite the gargantuan task that was this great foe destroyed. The big boss collection message item in Arch Thrones. And that, I mean, yeah. Yeah, is that. So all in all, there's not really a lot to say here other than I really needed to and wanted to show you this because it's bloody brilliant. Dark Souls Arch Thrones, a combination of all that is Souls, the best of all of them, into one custom adventure that is just the size of an entirely new Souls game made by some incredibly talented people and it is worth you having your eye, your attention upon it and it's something we'll definitely be following and hopefully one day be able to bring you much more on. It's very, very cool and I wish it all the best. I really, really do. Alrighty then, ladies and gentlemen, like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below and until we meet again, a good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye